equation of pair of planes. That means now we have a point which is on one plane and then that point can also satisfy Hello everyone, myself Shwetisha. Welcome to the third installment of our series on planes in analytic geometry. Uh, so, although what we are doing is we, uh, our videos are leaned toward UPSC maths option and analytic geometry is the subject of your paper one. But uh, even if you are a student who is brushing up on your math skills and you want to expand your understanding on analytic geometry, so I guarantee you that you will find something useful in, in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Let's start with the next topic that we have is position of two points with respect to plane. So what does that mean first of all? That means that if we have uh, if we have two points, so we have to figure out that this these two points are on the one side of the plane or on the opposite side of the plane. That means we have to we have to find the condition. We have to find the condition for two given points. Let me take two given points to be P, which is x1, y1, and z1, and Q to be x2, y2, z2 to lie on the same or opposite sides of a given plane. So here we have a plane and the two points P and Q. I want to figure it out that it is on the opposite side or it is on the same side P and Q. Right? This is what we want to find. So what we'll do is we'll find the line joining these two points and uh, then we can talk about a point which is on the line joining P and Q and that lie on the on this uh, plane. So uh, let this plane, this plane divide the line joining PQ in the ratio lambda is to 1. Obviously, this plane will be intersecting this line joining P and Q externally if P and Q lie on the same side of the plane. Okay, but right now we are assuming this situation here that it is uh, it is intersecting internally. Now, lambda value comes out to be positive or negative. That gives me that whether the plane cuts the line internally or externally. Okay. So, with that note, let's start. If I uh, assume that let this plane divide the joint of two given points to lie on the uh, just a let this plane divide the join of two given points in the ratio in the ratio lambda is to one then how can you calculate the uh, point to divide the join of this at point at point R. Then obviously R can be calculated by section formula and it would be x1 plus lambda because this is this we have assumed to be R. This is P which is x1, y1, z1. This is lambda is 1 and this is Q which is x2, comma y2, comma z. So uh, R coordinate will be x1 plus lambda times x2 divided by 1 plus lambda. Similarly, y1 plus lambda times y2 divided by 1 plus lambda. And z1 plus lambda times z2 divided by 1 plus lambda. Right? Now, only the value of lambda being positive or negative. Here, here, lambda is 
positive or negative according as r divides pq internally or externally So if R divides PQ internally, that means PQ are on the opposite side of the plane. And if it divides externally, that means PQ divides on the same side of the plane. But now see, this point, if this point lie on the plane, then, then it must satisfy the equation. So let me take equation of plane to be, let me take this plane, lie on the same side of plane AX plus by plus cz plus b is equal to b. Now, since this point r is on the plane, so it will satisfy equation of this plane, which implies, so we'll write since r lie on plane, lies on plane 1, which is c1, therefore, capital A times x1 plus lambda x2 divided by 1 plus lambda plus b times y1 plus lambda y2 divided by 1 plus lambda plus c times z1 plus lambda z2 divided by 1 plus lambda plus b is equal to 0. Let's try to find out lambda common. So this would be, if I take lambda common, it would be a x2 plus b y2 plus c z2 plus b plus a x1 plus b y1 plus c z1 plus b is equal to 0. So lambda comes out to be minus of a x1 plus b y1 plus c z1 plus b divided by a x2 plus b y2 plus c z2 plus b. If P and Q are on the same side, if P and Q are on same side of plane 1, which implies, so I'll write all the equivalent statements. P and Q are on the same side of plane, it implies, it implies R divides PQ externally, it implies lambda is negative, Fine. all of them are equal in statement, or I should write like this, this is equal to say this, is equal to lambda is negative, and it is equal to, so if this expression is negative, that means they have to be of the same sign, right, so it implies ax1 plus by1 plus cz1 plus b and ax2 plus by2 plus cz2 plus b have same sign. So if they are on the same side, these two expressions have same sign. And you can write equivalent statements for P and Q being on the opposite side of the plane. In that situation, what will happen? Uh, you will write the same four lines for P and Q are on the opposite side of the plane. Implies R divides PQ internally. Implies lambda is positive. Implies they will have different sign, opposite signs. So this is about position of point with respect to plane. Next. See, next we have perpendicular distance of a point from a plane. No. Let's say we have a 
planes here and this is origin right this is origin perpendicular distance of a point from a plane so if i take a point p here and i take See what I have done here is, uh, I have taken a plane, I have taken a point, I want to find the perpendicular distance. That means, while finding perpendicular distance, this will be perpendicular line, right? Now, there are two, uh, there are two types of uh, equation of plane we can have here. Number one is normal form. If normal form of, a, of this plane is given, then our approach will be different. If general form of this plane in general form of equation of plane is given, then our approach would be different. So normal form is what? If I have point P, x1, y1, z1, and we have plane whose normal form is Lx plus My plus Mz is equals to P. These two things are given to us. These are given to us. And we very well know what is this L, M, N, and P here. L, M, N are the direction for signs of what? Of the perpendicular that is drawn from the origin to, to the plane. And so if, if this is, let's say, perpendicular to this plane, and the length of this perpendicular is small p, and the direction ratios are L. Right? How can we find uh, this distance? C. Equation of any plane which is parallel to this given plane. equation of any plane which is parallel to plane 1 parallel to plane 1 is so if i am drawing the uh, plane parallel to the given plane what need what will be same see the normals will be uh, the direction of the normal will be same because because the planes are parallel so that's why the normal if i draw to both the planes that will also be normal that will also be parallel normals will also be parallel this is the plane so normal will also be parallel so if if normals are parallel this l m n are what these are direction for signs of the normal and if normals are parallel, then for the parallel lines, direction for signs will be same. So, direction for signs are same, but obviously, but obviously, distance can be different, right? Perpendicular distance can be different. Let it be P1. So, in that situation, equation of this plane would be Lx plus Mv plus Mz is equals to P1. This is your second question. But if this plane passes through your given point, x1, y1, z1, as it passes through, as it passes through P, which is x1, y1, z1, so we have through this, it implies n of x1 plus m of y1 plus n of z1 is equals to p1. It implies it will satisfy, it will, it will uh, equation 2 will be satisfied this, by this point x1, y1, z1. Now, what is the perpendicular distance? Perpendicular distance from the origin is p1. What is the perpendicular distance uh, of this plane that is p? So, what will be this distance? Distance between the two planes is exactly the distance 
between the point given point and the given plane. That will be simply P1 minus P. Right? So that will be simply uh, required required distance is simply P1 minus P. What is P1? P1 is Lx1 plus Ny1 plus Nz1. This is P1 minus. Okay, because you can see L, M, N and P all are given and X1, Y1, Z1 is also given. So that's your answer. But note here, what I have done is plane I have taken in the middle. Middle means between. Between the origin and the point I have. So that's why I was able to subtract P from P1. P1 was greater, P was smaller. What if this point and the origin are on the same side of the plane? Then obviously I will get a negative answer of this required distance. But distance cannot be negative. So I will put a negative sign instead. So we have to note that if origin and given point are on the same side of the plane, are on the same side of the plane, therefore, Oh, sorry. Then, then required distance would be then required distance would be negative of so that means it will be negative of L x one plus m y one plus n z one minus. The only difference is this. But if I am dealing with a general form, if I am dealing with a general form of the plane, so that means plane would be a x plus b y plus c z plus d is equal to 0 and point is point is p x1 y1 z1 so perpendicular distance from p to plane 1 is given as is given by Simply plus minus a x one plus b y one. So you substitute this x one y one z one in in this uh, equation of plane c z one plus d. You divide it by square root of square of coefficient of this x y and z a square plus b square plus c square. So this was a distance from a point to a plane and equation of plane is given in the general form. Okay. So same rule can be applied if you want to find distance between two parallel planes. So if you want to find distance between two parallel planes, then what we need to do is we just take, we'll just take a point on one plane and we'll find the perpendicular distance to, to the next plane. Right. So either on plane 1 or on plane 2, you take a point, you take any point and from that point, you take a perpendicular distance to the next plane okay. and the job is done okay. and, and you know that how to find that perpendicular distance. So, this will also help you to find distance between two parallel planes. Next. Find the distance of the point 1, 2, 0 from the plane. The plane is given to be 4x plus 3y plus 12z plus 16. Now, if you have a confusion that this is this is general form or this is a normal form, then you can also check by taking the coefficients of this experiment. Coefficients of this x, y, z are supposed to be direction for signs if 
just a second. So uh, this was supposed to be L, M, and N, right? And direction cosine satisfy the relation L square plus M square plus N square is equal to 1. And definitely that is not satisfied here. So it is not normal form of the equation of plane. This is general form. And how to find this is? The required distance would be plus minus. Now plus minus is just to make sure that you are getting a positive answer. Okay, that that uh, depends depends upon this modulus basically. So substitute this substitute this point in the equation of plane. It will be four times one plus three times two plus twelve times zero plus sixteen divided by under root of four square plus three square plus so your numerator would be 4, 6, 10 and this is 26 divided by 144, 9, 16, 25, 169, 13. So this is going to be 2. That's your answer. Next. Question number 2. Find the distance between the two between the parallel planes. So what I told you to just take a point on one of the plane. So if I or see one more thing we can do actually in this question find the distance between the parallel planes. These are not normal forms of the plane using the same property L square plus M square plus N square is not one. But we can Form. We can convert it into the normal form. How? See, normal form of given equation of planes are planes are 2x minus 2y plus z plus d is equal to 0 and divided by divided by root of this 2 square plus 2 square plus 1 square. This is how you convert it into normal form. And 4x minus 4y plus 2z plus 5 is equal to 0 divided by under root 4 square plus 4 square plus 2 square. So that is going to be, this will convert into 2 by 3, which is uh, 9. So 2 by 3 x minus 2 by 3 y plus 1 by 3 z plus 1 equals to 0. And next is, this is 16 plus 16, 32, 36, so 6. So 4 by 6, again 2 by 3 x minus 4 by 6, 2 by 3, 2 by 6 means 1 by 3 and 5, 5, 6. So you can look at this very carefully. Th these are normal form and obviously the coefficients of x, y, z has to be same because these are parallel planes. Parallel planes means parallel normal, parallel normal means the direction cosines will be same and we can see from the equation as well. And what is this 1 and 5 by 6? 1 and 5 by 6 are the perpendicular distance and because both of them are positive, that both of these plus uh, 1 and plus 5 by 6, that also tells us that both the planes are on the same side of the origin. Right. So this is origin. This is first plane. This is second plane. So one distance is 5 by 6 and another distance is, one, one distance is 1 and another distance is 5 by 6. So what is the distance between these two planes? 5 by 6 minus 1. Therefore, required or, or you can mention everything. Mention here first that length of perpendiculars 
from origin to these planes are 1 and 5 by 6 respectively and these planes are are on the same side of the origin. Therefore, required distance is 1 minus 5 by 6, 1 by 6. So, it's not just that you know how to solve the question. You should also know how to present your answer. Subjective paper, in the subjective paper, you have to write the answers properly, explain everything and also take care of the space that is provided. You cannot use any extra space. So, within the given space, you have to manage to write everything and it should be the key points also. Don't write anything that is not required. So, how you write, you present your answers, that also matters. Next, we have question number three. Look at this. This says, find the locus of the point, the sum of the squares of whose distance from the plane, this three, three planes uh, are given, is nine. Okay. So, first of all, uh, what is locus? Most of you are confused. Whenever this word comes, locus, but there's nothing to worry about. It's, it's simple. What is locus? You imagine that there is a there is an ant, ant who is moving, right? moving in a particular uh, way. But what you are doing is you are tracing the path of the ant. So this is ant, and ant is moving, right? And you are tracing the path. So this path is what locus. Locus of the point. Point is what where the ant is moving. So, locus is nothing but path of a moving point. But obviously, that point, that moving point does not move in any random direction, in any, any random way. It moves with a given restriction. What is the restriction? That the sum of square of the distances from these three planes has to be always 9. So, let, let, x1, y1, z1 be that point. Be the point whose locus is required. Whose locus is required. Its distance I have to calculate from all the planes. So yep, now distance. of this point from from x plus y plus z is equal to 0 is we substitute point so x1 plus y1 plus z1 divided by the rules of their coefficients 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square that is x1 plus y1 plus z1 divided by root. Distance from this. Uh, distance from x plus 0 y, there is no component of y, minus z is equal to 0 is substitute point x1 minus z1 divided by root 2, root of 1 square plus minus 1 square. That will be root 2. And the last one from x minus 2y plus z is equal to 0 is x1 minus 2y1 plus z1 divided by the root of 1 square plus 2 square 5 plus 1 square 6. So that is root 6. According to the given question, according to given question x1 plus y1 plus z1 divided by root 3 whole square 
plus x1 minus z1 divided by root 2 whole square plus x1 minus 2y1 plus z1 divided by root 6 whole square is equals to what? Is equals to 9. That's what it says. Sum of square of whose distances from the plane is 9. Therefore, you solve them. This is 3, uh, 2 and 6. So, while taking the LCM, I try. So, we have to find the points, right? Okay, so, x1 square plus y1 square plus z1 square plus 2x1y1 plus 2y1z1 plus 2x1z1 divided by 3. Let's take the LCM also because we have 3, 2 and 6 so 6 will be LCM. So this will be multiplied by 2, 2 out. 2 will be multiplied throughout. Plus for the next one 3 will be multiplied throughout. So 3 x1 square plus z1 square minus 2 x1 z1. And the last one plus x1 square plus 4y1 square plus z1 square minus 4x1y1 minus 4y1z1 plus 2x1z is equals to 54. Let's see if something is, uh, can be cancelled with. So 2 plus 3 plus 5. This is 6x1 square plus again 2 plus 4. 6y1 square. For the z1, this is 2, 3 and then again 6z1 square. 4x1, y1 is cancelled with this. 4y1z1 is cancelled with this. 4 minus 6 minus 2 and plus 2 is cancelled here. Okay. So we are left with this. This is equal to x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared is equal to 9. And we do not have to forget that this x1, y1, z1 is a moving point. That's not just a single point. So locus, when we write locus, we change this x1, y1, z1 and we replace it by x, y, z. Therefore, Required locus is required locus is x square plus y square plus z square is equals to 9. That's a sphere if you know the equation of sphere. Next. Next article we have equation of a plane bisecting angles between uh, between two given planes. So, that means, first of all, let's try to understand what this article says. This article gives us two planes. So, let the equation of the equation of the given planes be A1x plus B1y plus C1z plus D1 is equals to 0 and A2x plus B21 plus C2z plus D2 is equals to 0. These are the two equations. So this is one plane and let us imagine that this is the second plane. Now, th this is the line of intersection. We'll have an angle between them. Let it be theta. So, I want a plane which is passing through that line of intersection. This line of intersection L or let's say PQ. PQ is the line of intersection. So, I want equation of a plane that passes through PQ. But there, there are infinitely many planes passing through a point. What is the speciality about this plane? 
this plane is also intersecting this theta not just intersecting it is bisecting the angle theta bisecting means intersecting into uh, dividing into two equal parts so we have a third plane right here which is passing through this line of intersection. Okay, so this is the plane we are interested in. We have to find this equation of this. Now, equation of any plane passing through the intersection of the plane 1 and 2, we know how to find. So, equation of, first of all, Or instead of that, what we can do, see, one more thing we can see, uh, do here is, if I take any point on this plane, let us take any point to be x, y, z. Then that x, y, z will be equidistant from both of the planes. Because that is on the plane which is bisecting the angle between the two planes. So, let us do it with this approach. Let x comma y comma z be any point on the plane on the plane bisecting the angles between bisecting the angle between plane one and two. So then x comma y comma z must be must be equidistant. Equidistant means at an equal distance. Must be equidistant from the given planes one and two. Let's find out the distance. And let's equate them. That is. So, x, y, z is a point which I have to replace by x, y, z. So, x, y, z will be as So, a, x, uh, sorry, we have a, y, a, 1, x plus b, 1, y plus c, 1, z plus b, divided by the root of a, 1, square plus b, 1, square plus c, 1, square, that is equal to plus minus a2x plus b2y plus c2z plus b2 divided by so root of a2 square plus b2 square plus c2z. That is this is the required equation of plane. Okay. Now, uh, the positive negative sign. Why this positive negative sign? Why I am getting two equations? Because you know that actually there, there are four sections there. Obviously, these are the two planes. I am drawing the 2D version. Okay. So, this, these are the two planes. This side I am calling both of them as 1 and 1 because these are acute angles. One of them will be acute angle, the other will be obtuse angle. So, uh, there will be one plane which is bisecting the angle which is acute angle and that there will be one plane which is bisecting the angles which is obtuse angle and that is why this plus and minus. So, if I assume taking b1 and b2 to be positive as positive. If I assume that b1 and b2 are positive, then I can make a confusion about this positive negative sign, uh, which is the positive sign will give me the angle between the given thing, which contains the origin. So, see, there are two different approaches. One is the 
obviously obviously origin will be if origin does not lie on the plane then origin will be either here in the first means acute angle side or the obtuse angle side so what it is what it says is if d1 and d2 are positive then the positive sign gives the plane bisecting the angle now it's not saying bisecting the acute angle or obtuse angle it says it say it says that it bisects the angle which contains the origin now that origin can be in the acute angle side as well it can be in the obtuse uh, angle side as well so it bisects the angle between Between the given planes, which contains the origin, while negative, while negative sign gives the plane bisecting. the other okay now listen to this very carefully this was just about containing the origin what about acute and obtuse you get a point let's say uh, sorry you get a plane equation whether with the help of positive sign or the negative sign let us say that d1 and d2 are positive and i am considering the one with the positive sign the one with the this positive sign so i'll get an equation of a plane now that plane is on the acute angle side it is bisecting the acute angle or obtuse angle how we'll get to know this this is a plane let's say right so i'll take that plane and i'll take one of the given plane i can find angle between them if angle is less than 45 degree that means because this is the bisecting plane so the other side will also be less than 45 so total will be less than 9 right and this is the plane which is bisecting your acute angle otherwise it is the uh, plane which is on the opposite side okay so all you need to do is you have to find angle between the obtained plane and one of the plane one simple condition which is so these are two different condition one condition is to find a plane on the side where the origin lies and one condition is to find a plane which bisect the acute angles but what is the connection between this origin and the acute angle because i don't know origin lies in the acute angle side or on the obtuse angle side so this is this next uh, point will tell you a relation between that and that is if a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 if this is negative if this is negative uh then origin then origin lie in acute angle between the given plane between the given plane otherwise it will be uh, on the obtuse next let's start with a question let's start discussing the question here this would be our question number 4 question says we have a plane lx plus my is equals to 0 is rotated to an angle alpha about its line of intersection with the plane uh, with with the plane z is equals to 0 prove that the equation of the plane in its new position so let's try to understand what the question says question says that if you have if you have a plane which is rotated 
so a plane can be rotated about any line that is on that plane okay so it's it's uh, important to specify that line and that line here is the line of intersection with z is equals to 0 so first of all i'll find z is equals to 0 before rotating it so let's say this is z is equals to 0 this is the plane z is equals to 0 and the line of intersection it gives me and the line of intersection it gives me is this one. this is the line of intersection okay this is p and this is q now in this line of intersection this plane is rotated this plane 1 okay this plane 1 is rotated it is rotated through an angle alpha so we have a another plane passing through obviously because that is rotated about that line so this is this is a plane which is rotated through an angle alpha this is an angle alpha prove that the equation of this plane new plane means new position New position of which plane? Plane one. Now let's start. So equation of any plane through through line of intersection of of two planes, right? Plane L X. Plus m y equals to zero first, and z is equals to zero second. This plane in the new position is the plane which is passing through line of intersection of two given planes, and we know how to find it. this is l x plus m y plus lambda times z is equals to zero. Lambda is a constant. Now to find out the value of lambda. uh we have this uh, this this additional information that the new this plane 3 plane 3 is making alpha angle with plane 1 now if 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 angle between planes lx plus ny is equals to 0 and and 3 is alpha then then angle between their normals is also alpha angle between the two planes is alpha so angle between their normals is also alpha because both are just 90 degree to the plane now how to find angle between uh, the two lines we are finding angles between the two normals so normals means line we have formula we have seen the formula but we need to know the direction for sines and direction for sines are what just the coefficients just the coefficients of this uh, x y z in the equation so direction for sines also direction for sines of their normals r for the first one it is l comma m comma 0 and for the second one it is l comma m comma lambda this is the third one respectively so we can find cos alpha right cos alpha is l1 l2 plus m1 m2 plus n1 n that's the formula but what we want is not cos alpha in our expression because you see you need to see what is what we need to find out in which direction we are moving it's not like you apply anything uh, you you will not be able to get to the uh, expression that we want so it's better that at after every point you look at the expression and you make sure that we are moving toward the expression that we want. we need 
tan alpha, we don't need cos alpha. So from the cos alpha, you can find formula of tan alpha. I'm leaving you uh, this point uh, to you because we know formula of cos alpha that is L1 L2 plus L1 L2 plus L1 L2. You can find tan alpha. So I find tan alpha. Tan alpha would be plus minus under root of uh, this will be M1 N2. So that's L1 M1 N1 N2 N2 N2. And this is the pattern that you observe here. So M1 M2 minus minus M2 N1. Yes. Whole square plus so right now what we have done is this multiply minus this plus then uh, for l1 n2 minus l2 n1 this and this and the last one is l1 n2 minus l2 n1 whole square divided by L1 L2 plus M1 L2 plus N1 N2. Let's substitute values. So after substituting values, you will get. Okay, so this is acting as L1, M1, and L1, and this is your L2, M2, and L2. Substitute values. This is going to be M lambda minus 0 whole squared plus 0 minus. So this is uh, L lambda. L lambda minus 0 full square and this will be L m minus L full square divided by L square plus M square. So this is lambda square M square lambda square plus L square lambda square plus L square M square. Okay, sorry, this is cancelled now. So lambda square I can take common. L square plus M square. So this is going to be lambda plus minus lambda outside and we'll have divided by L square plus M square. It implies lambda is plus minus tan alpha under root of L square plus M square. And you see if you substitute this expression here, we'll get this equation. Lx plus My plus minus Z times tan alpha under root of L square plus M square. Okay, that's your expression. Let's put this in. Equation 3 to obtain required result. Next, equation of pair of planes. That means now we have a point which is on one plane and then that point can also satisfy, can, can also be on the other plane. So when we have to find equation of pair of planes, that means any point on first plane will also satisfy that equation and any point on the second plane will also satisfy that equation. Individually, if I take Equation separately, let L1x plus M1y plus M1z plus P1 is equal to 0. And L2x plus M2y plus M2z plus P2 is equal to 0. B, the equations of 
two planes. Then equation of equation of pair of planes will be represented as will be represented as L1x plus M1y plus L1z plus P1 multiplied by L2x plus M2y plus N2z plus P2 is equal to 0. As you can clearly see that the points that were satis that was, uh, that was satisfying equation 1 will satisfy equation 3 also because this factor will be 0 and it doesn't matter if the second uh, factor is coming out to be 0 or not because of the first factor and they are in multiplication so it will satisfy third equation. And same argument for the points on the plane 2. Okay, so this is, uh, this represents equation of pair of planes. You multiply. To find and also see this equation. This equation number 3 is what? This is not a linear equation in XYZ. You will get a quadratic x squared, y squared, z squared. So these, this is second degree in XYZ, right? Now we have a condition here, see, to find the condition that the general homogeneous equation of second degree uh, in XYZ, which is this equation, represent a pair of planes. Now it's not like every second degree equation in XYZ is representing a pair of planes, right? So here is a general homogeneous equation in second degree and we need to find out the condition that what condition it, these coefficient, these coefficients as in A, B, C, F, G, H should satisfy so that I can know that yes, this homogeneous equation in second degree represent a pair of things. What that would be? That condition would be a determinant of these coefficients. That would be A, B, C, H here, G here, F here, and H, G here. If this coefficient, uh, uh, this coefficient matrix has the determinant, this is a third order determinant. If this third order determinant is zero, then this equation is definitely representing a pair of uh, things. And how can we find angle between them? How can we find angle uh, between those pair of planes that we are talking about here? So the formula would be tan theta would be 2 times under root of f square plus g square plus h square minus bc minus ac minus ab divided by a plus b plus c. Okay. Obviously, we will have a condition of perpendicularity if theta is pi by 2. So, theta pi by 2 means tan theta, tan pi by 2 is infinity. So, in infinity, this denominator has to be 0. So, that means condition of perpendicularity would be a plus b plus c is equal to 0. Here, condition of perpendicularity, perpendicularity is a plus b plus c is equal to 0. So, do remember one condition and one form. Start with the question. Prove that this represents a pair of planes and find the angle between them. So, all you need to do is simply uh, find out the condition. Simply find out the determinant. What is a, b, c here? So, compare, see. This is ax squared plus by squared plus cz squared plus 2f, uh, yz, 2g, uh, zx and 2h, xy. So, a is 2, b is minus 6, c is minus 12, 
2f is 18. So, f is going to be 9, g is going to be 1 and h is going to be half. Find out the determinants a, h, g, f. H, A, this is B, this is C, and over here H, G, and F. This has to be 0. You find out the condition, actually, it will come out to be 0. So, yes, it will present a pair, uh, pair of plane. And the angle between them, again, apply the formula and I write the answer. Kindly verify this. This is your answer. Okay. Now, next question is. Question number, this was question number 5. Then we have question number 6. Question number 5. Okay, this question says, show that this represents a pair of planes and find the angle between them as well. So, you just need to find your A, B, C, F, G, H in this and you need to compare. So, uh, this will be a times z minus x, x minus y plus b times y minus z, x minus y plus c times z minus x and y minus z is equals to 0. Open this, this will be a x square plus b y square plus c z square and then what about the uh, y z, coefficient of y z would be here and we will have y z from here. We have y z from here as well. So we'll have b plus c minus a y z. Then we have minus c plus a minus b z x minus a plus b minus c x. That is equal to zero. So if it represent, if it represent a pair of planes we should have we should have determinant a h g h b f g f c should be zero that is we substitute the values a b c are as it is what is h so minus half and a minus a plus b minus c so minus half a plus b minus c really here i have minus half a plus c minus b here i have minus half a plus b minus c. This is b. Some properties of solving the determinants will be required. Here. If you want to revisit the properties, not not the complete chapter, just revisit. If you want to revisit the properties, then you can uh, revisit NCRT. Uh, in NCRT class twelve, class twelve NCRT, the determinant matrix and determinants. So you can just go through the properties. The last one would be minus a plus C minus B plus C minus B is minus half B plus C minus B that is this should be equal to 0. So yeah, what we can do here is I can just take actually uh, two common, oh, sorry, one by two common from each row and I'll take it to the right hand side. So it will become minus 2a. Okay, if I take minus two common, uh, sorry, minus half common. So it will be a plus b minus c, a plus c minus b. This is a plus b minus c. This is minus 2b, b plus c minus a, a plus c minus b. B plus C minus A and C minus 2. C that is equals to 0. If I now add all the columns, you see, uh, 2A, B and B cancel, C and C cancel. See, if I add all the columns, 
So I'll get 0, 0 and 0. Right. So yes, that is true. That is true that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. So yes, it will give an uh, uh, this pair of planes. And what will be the required angle? Required angle would be This window, which is true, and for the angle, what we can do again just apply direct formula, and there cannot be any simplification because everything is in terms of variables here. So, this will be tan inverse of uh, substituting the values and simplify it, you will get under root of 3 a square plus b square plus c square minus 2 ab minus 2 uh, ac minus 2 bc divided by a plus b plus c that is going to be 0 sorry that is going to be theta and that's it so plane is finished i hope uh, this was helpful for you thank you so much